Hi everybody, it is me, Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles luxury realtor. Today we're gonna to be talking about Venice. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna ask you to just take a brief moment to do so by clicking that subscribe button right below, as well as the bell for updates. Stay tuned, we'll be right back to get into Venice. It's me, Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles luxury realtor. Today we're going to be discussing the area of Los Angeles known as Venice. Venice is part of the west side, and Venice is really most commonly referred to as Venice Beach. If you said to someone, where's Venice? Yes, they would know you're talking about Venice Beach, but most people will call it Venice Beach. Now, where exactly is that located? Venice Beach is accessible off the 10 freeway. It is bounded by the northwest um, by Santa Monica. Then Mar Vista is on the northeast. Culver City, Del Rey, and Marina Del Rey border it on the southeast. Bologna Creek and is bordering it on the south. And the Pacific Ocean is clearly bordering it to the west. Now, like a lot of Southern California, especially along the coast, the area really had some original inhabitants, right? But I'm gonna kind of jump ahead in 1839, La Bologna, which included the southern part of Venice, was granted by the Mexican government to the Machados and Tamaltes, and it gave them title to Rancho La Bologna, which became the port of Bologna. Venice was originally called uh, Venice of America, and it was established in 1905 as a seaside resort town um, by Abbott Kenny. Now, Abbott Kenny and his partner, Francis Ryan, purchased uh, about two miles of oceanfront property south of Santa Monica. This is what we know as Venice Beach today. This purchase was done in 1891, and they built this resort town um, on the north end of the property called Ocean Park, which eventually got annexed from Santa Monica. So some of you are familiar with Ocean, so just kind of picture that that as the boundary right there. After Ryan died, Abbott Kenny and his new partners continued building south of Navy Street. And when the partnership devolved, dissolved, sorry, Abbott began to uh, build his seaside resort, like the namesake city, Venice in Italy. When Venice of America opened in 1905, Kenny had dug several miles of canals to drain the marshes for the residential area. He built a 1,200 foot long pleasure pier with an auditorium, a ship restaurant, a dance hall, hot salt plunge, a block long arcade, and it, all of this had like Venetian architecture. He was very fond of Italy, if you will. Venice was originally an independent city until it was annexed into the city of Los Angeles in 1926. Venice is known for having canals, a beach obviously, and an oceanfront walk with two miles of a paved, um, not sidewalk so much, but an, a paved pedestrian promenade that features performers, fortune tellers, artists, and really there's two and a half miles that people can bike, walk, jog, rollerblade, which are all very popular activities that you will see. If you've ever been to Venice Beach on the weekends, there's shops all along this area, plus there's a lot of outdoor vendors, street vendors, and as I mentioned, a lot of like local performers really just kind of hang out at Venice, make money by doing their performances. Some of these people have actually made it onto television or they've toured across America because of the exposure they've gotten at Venice, and it's really part of the draw to walking the Venice boardwalk, if you will. Now, in 1929, oil was discovered south of Washington Street, along the Venice Peninsula, now known as the Marina Peninsula. Within two years, 250 oil wells covered the area and drilling ways actually clogged the waterways. It was a short-lived boom that provided income to the community, which had really suffered a lot in the Great Depression, and most of the wells were capped off by the 19th. I'm gonna keep it real. Venice has, always, has not always had the best track record or history. See, for a while, Venice was actually ignored by the city of Los Angeles and really 
became run down. It was kind of referred to as the slum by the sea in the 1950s. And with the exception of new police and fire station in the 1930s, the city really spent very little money in Venice improving it after the annex after it annexed it into the city of Los Angeles. They did not pave the trollway, the, the, which is where the, the trolleys used to go, until 1954 when county and state funds became available. Venice was littered with low rents for really run-down bungalows, which attracted predominantly European immigrants and a, a very young culture of artists, poets, and writers, which is really what Venice is known for today. Venice has a farmer's market every single Friday from 7 a.m. till 12 a.m. on Venice Boulevard in Venice Way. Venice is known for the boardwalks, it's known for the shops, it is heavily, heavily, heavily visited on the weekends with tourists far and wide and locals. And Venice Beach has the most famous outdoor workout area ever. Muscle Beach, which has been featured in a plethora of movies, and this is where you can catch some serious workout enthusiasts. And I mean serious. These guys and gals have amazing bodies and like incredible tans, and clearly they just live outdoors at the Venice Muscle Beach gym, I'm just saying. There's also basketball courts, and they're really renowned for street ball. Very competitive game. I know several uh, professional athletes that have actually played in this, several um, Division I uh, college players have played in this, and this is actually where some people have been recruited into the NBA just from the sheer strength and competitiveness of the game right here at these courts. Now, I'm, I'm gonna say what probably most people don't wanna talk about. For a while, Venice was really struggling with um, some, some gang activity, and this, of course, kind of goes back to what I said earlier. For a while, the city of Los Angeles kind of just ignored Venice and it got run down, but it has been experiencing a massive revival over the last 20 years. A lot of developers have gone in, built homes. There's just people that live in Venice, love Venice, really have a lot of pride of home ownership, lots of trendy restaurants, places to eat. And again, with all the tourism that comes and goes, it's a great place. For a while, when I lived on the west side, I actually used to go down to Venice three, I wanna say nights, because I worked at early shift, about five o'clock, and rollerblade. And I even would do this on Saturday and Sunday mornings around seven in the morning, and that's when you would catch, interestingly enough, a lot of radio personalities and people in tel television and film that were just trying to beat all the crowds and get a really, you know, outdoor, sweat-driven workout in. Now, I'm going to go over three properties that are currently on the market in Venice at the time of recording this video. You know how it goes by now, right? So the first one is asking a modest $1,220,000. This is located at 1849 Malgrove Ave. It's a two bedroom, two bath, 758 square foot home, so it's relatively small, hence the price. The second property is a new construction home asking $5,790,000. It's a five bedroom, seven bathroom home, 5,999 square feet on a 10,889 square foot lot, which is pretty large for Venice. And it's an architectural modern masterpiece. L literally, this is one of Venice's biggest lots because Venice doesn't have very big lots. It's got 13 foot tall ceilings, outdoor floor, I mean, open, not outdoor, open floor plan with, of course, that indoor, outdoor, Southern California essential uh, vibe going on with lots of entertaining space. The third property is asking $9.4 million. This is located at 2715 Oceanfront Walk. It is a three bedroom, five bathroom home. Yes, I said that three bedroom, five bathroom home. 4,253 square feet on a very small lot, 2,520 square feet and it's constructed by the notable uh, Newport Beach architect, Ian Harrison. Walls of glass just create an indoor-outdoor feel. So even though the lot's small, it doesn't feel small. And this really allows for unobstructed views from Malibu um, Pier, well, Malibu itself all the way down to the Venice Pier. This is very common for properties that are right there on the boardwalk to be on very small lots and with glass fronts that just really allows those living there and inside the home to feel that indoor-outdoor energy and vibe. 
Hopefully all of this information has been helpful to you to get to know Venice a little bit better and to really think, do you want to live at Venice Beach? Is this the spot for you? Do you want to live right on the beach? Do you want to live close to the beach? What is really most important to you? If you want some more information, of course I have some goodies for you. Uh, below is a link for a guide to relocating to Los Angeles as well as a guide on Venice Beach. Before I go today, I want to thank you again for watching my video. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please take a moment to click that subscribe button below as well as the bell for updates. I'm wrapping up 31 neighborhood videos in 31 days here on my YouTube channel, Real Estate to Financial Freedom. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next one.